Good afternoon all. On behalf of IOT Academy, we welcome you all for the fourth session of National Level Faculty Refresher Program on Teaching, Learning and Research in HEIs. Let me introduce the resource person of today's session, Dr. Karana Jadav. Dr. Karana Jadav is currently working as an assistant professor, Department of MBA, Neville Vadia Institute of Management Studies and Research, Pune, Maharashtra. Her educational qualifications include BE Computer Science, MBA, Dual in HR and Marketing, Net Management, and PhD in HR Management. She has 16 years of teaching experience. Her areas of specialization include Human Resource Management and Marketing Management. She has to accredit numerous research publications in national and international journals. Some include the rise of 3D e-commerce, management perceptions on quality management in educational institutions, and trends and challenges of talent management. She has to accredit two patents, device to detect the efficiency of employees in an office environment and a system to analyze the employee performance in an organization. She is the recipient of Women Researcher Award, International Scientist Awards, Young Researcher Award 2022, and N number of awards. She has attended, organized, and served as a resource person for numerous FTPs, workshops, conferences, and seminars. She is also working as a program coordinator and IQAC member. We welcome you, ma'am. And with this, we hand over the session to Dr. Karna Jadav. Ma'am, please. Thank you for my introduction. So, I don't know how many uh, attendants are today in this particular refresher course. So, good afternoon to one and all. Am I audible to all? Yes, ma'am, you are audible, ma'am. Okay. So, before starting this particular session, can I come uh, let you know, like, how many? Uh, faculties over here from Management Institute. So I think because this is a mixed crowd. Yes, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. This is a mixed crowd. Mixed crowd. Mixed crowd. So today I consider you all will be a, my mentor. So let me give a permission to start with the mentorship, how we can help the student with this mentorship program in higher education institutes. So throughout the Indian education system okay so uh, let me start with my ppt Is that visible to all? No, ma'am, it is not visible, ma'am. Can I start presenting from my end, ma'am? No issues, ma'am. Take a second. I have made some changes in that. That's why I'm asking to let me start yes, with me. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. I'm able to see your screen, ma'am, but okay. not the slides, ma'am. Slides? Slides, it is not visible, ma'am. Slides is not visible. Still, the lights are not visible. Mm. Now? Sorry, ma'am, it's not uh, visible, ma'am. One second.
Ma'am, it is visible, ma'am. The slides are visible, ma'am. Now it's visible? Yes, ma'am. The slides are visible, ma'am. Okay. Can you uh, present the slides using slideshow mode, ma'am? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Video off for a lag. Video off for a lag. Now it's visible, ma'am. And the slides are visible, ma'am, but not in uh, slideshow mode, ma'am. Uh, okay. Ma'am, you can just press F five, ma'am. I can play one by one then. Ma'am, no issues, ma'am. You can continue, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Let me see. Do you want me to present, ma'am? Can I start presenting from my end? Okay, okay. Uh, now, this is uh, slides, which I think everyone can uh, visible these slides. Yes, ma'am. The slides are visible, ma'am. Everyone okay. Up and see, ma okay, okay. So, this is my first slides. Uh, I, I really thanks to IoT for giving me this opportunity to share my expertise in this mentorship program. So, let me introduce uh, in my way that in my institute, I started this mentorship program in 2006. So that time, even the UGC and the uh, that is a higher uh, education system, considering that taking a care of under the um, ministry, HRD ministry. So I was not aware about that there is a specific objective about this mentorship program. But since I am a product of Jawahar Naudi Vidyalaya, and that is a very, uh, um, in Indian government system, one of the best education school, which is a dream of uh, Raju Gandhi, who was uh, like a prime minister that time. So we had that particular system in my school. And when I taken this after my engineering as well as when I taken this particular as my career to enter from corporate to education system, I feel this mentoring and mentorship program is very, very important because I found like there are many loopholes. We as a teacher normally have a basic role that just to teach a student because we compare, we feel that student, they are coming only to teach, only to learn. Okay, so apart from that, there are many or uh, there are uh, various issues which we feel to give being a mediator, being a tutor, being a teacher. So this is one particular aspect which I feel uh, in the mentoring system, a uh, payback to your society. Now, we as a human being, we have a various means and mode to pay back to your society. And this is a one very noble profession where we can consider as like being a teacher how we are paying back to society. Now, considering this mentorship pro program is uh, essentially a formalized relationship that supports and encourages a professional learning. So I feel personally, this is the need of uh, education system. And this is not only in education system, but we need in your personal life as well. So in mentoring, a sound trusting relationship will really upon the degree of understanding and responsibility shared by the mentoring partners. So you need to identify who are your mentor and mentee. So in a normal sense, 
uh, there are a two type of a mentoring when we can uh, select by choice or one means normally like a formal and informal so mentoring considering it's a very dynamic process and a developmental network of mentoring can help a mentees identify a several mentors who can address a variety of career related needs so here there are different type of a mentorship program it, it could be like a one to one one to many many to one even i feel in the the who are the audience who are listening to me throughout their life in various phase of their life maybe in a tenure your entire life cycle or of your professional life cycle you have a many mentors uh, though means like in you know, your being a student also there there are there could be possibility like you have gone through many mentors in your life your parents again can be a play a very important role as a mentor but here we are today focusing on mentoring in a higher education system like how this particular mentorship program we can implement for successful like from start, uh, zero to end result to come with the very strategic outcome so mentoring uh, it's a uh, oxford school of coaching and mentoring if they define the mentoring is to support and encourage people to manage their own learning in order that they may maximize their potential develop their skill improve their performance and become the person they want to be so here many times we are not able to identify like we have that skill so here these are a certain mediator or maybe a mentor who help to identify their hidden capacity or hidden competency which you are having okay so objective of mentorship program in higher education is help faculty members to of higher education program to identify and achieve career development and personal growth goals compatible with the objectives me, of yes ma'am your slides are not changing ma'am objectives of heis uh, i'm not getting your ma'am ma'am your slides are not moving we are just able to see your first slide ma'am your slides are not moving ma'am hey. no still no ma'am uh, no ma'am we are uh, yes ma'am now we are able to see ma'am So this is my second slide. Yes, ma'am. Now we are able to see, ma'am. Okay, okay. Now, objective of mentorship in higher education is to not uh, is not only to help mentor, but it is uh, mentee, but helping a mentor as well as to achieve the career development and personal growth as well as so support building academic leaders who have a knowledge, skills, and abilities. So again. a foster higher levels of engagement and the career vision which you can share with your mentees equip faculty members with the tools necessary to enhance their capability within their current roles so we are aware about that being a teacher we have a very prominent role and we need to identify what is your role and being a teacher being a tutor what is your real responsibility if you are able to understand that then i initially when i started with ki you need to keep one particular intention in your mind you need to pay back to your student in various means create opportunity to meet and partner with the stakeholders or a cultural boundaries so here you they are real stakeholders their parents are also real stakeholders so you need to find out like how you can help them create a culture that sees mentorship as an effective way of developing a profession in future so here we are looking for a overall development con con considering that it's, it's a two way approach it is not only a from a mentor because this is a mentorship when we are talking about a mentorship it is a relationship between a mentors and a mentee so this is like somewhere combination of various activity we need to train we need to motivate we need to advise we need to identify if uh, whether they are success or not uh, and then uh, give a proper direction coaching support goals so it is a multi method approach in a one particular uh, concise program we call as a mentorship program so supporting the mentoring relationship is very very important so for that uh, when you are working in any institute you have that particular system who help this mentorship program there are a certain prerequisite so that you can run this mentorship program at where maybe you belong to any engineering college mba college art commerce college any medical uh, uh, medical college there supposed to be some concrete system we, uh, we help to uh, foster this particular mentorship relationship program in your organization so mentoring has long been recognized as a very powerful tool in career development 
So early in career, psychologists are advised to find mentors either informally on their own. So uh, I'm asking a very simple question, like how many uh, uh, like a, a teacher who are now in this repressure course, they have selected their mentor in their maybe before starting this teaching or maybe this career. Anyone has selected their mentor formally or informally any any way? If they want to contribute like. OK, maybe uh, the time will not permit us. But here, like we have uh, the two process, like a formal and informal, whereas your organization support this mentorship program to identify the pair. And for that, we need to find out some particular selection mode. Because uh, if it is a mismatch, then we, are ob we have certain objective to achieve through this mentorship program. So the pair, who will be the mentor and who will be mentee? It's supposed to be a, supposed to be a perfect matching. Then only we can get a success in the mentorship program through this mentorship program with the various strategies and the policies. So regardless of how a mentor and mentee are matched, etiquettes and the ethics demand that the relationship be conducted in a very professional manner with the consideration and respect for both individuals. So it is a two-way approach. It is always like a give and take policy. The leadership within an institution must first recognize and identify the need for mentoring and then plan, develop, support, and promote a program that directly address specific workforce gap, both current and the future. So regardless of whether the leadership at an institution recognizes and supports mentoring, a staff member's career can benefit from mentoring relationship, even if not officially sanctioned. So initially, when I have given an example that initially, uh, we don't have that particular system in my organization. So I take a lead to start with this small mentorship program and that is i was dealing with the mba student and i formed like according to their specialization wise initially people they come with the mind student they take admission considering that they finalize their specific specialization okay this is for example i'm sharing with you it is actual example which i try to implement in my organization so here what we did uh, i uh, prepare one plan where I ask the student during an induction and or uh, induction that is a first uh, uh, maybe a week in the campus for their new uh, batch. So what exactly your specialization? So we have already a particular faculty with some their specific specialization because I consider maybe because they come this is a professional degree higher education student institution they offer some professionalism. So people or student they take a admission with some objective to complete. To support their objective, we need to frame this policy, frame this plan, and I implement it in this way. Like I ask the student, like what, what are your choice? Like maybe after the second uh, semester, which specialization you like to continue with? So, like we have HR faculty, so the student who are already decided as like uh, HR as my specialization. So there maybe this will be the proper uh, considering this as a professional career demand. Uh, perfect match because these people are smart enough like a marketing uh, faculty they are maybe they are already have that particular knowledge like how to help these students who want to pursue their career in a marketing field finance student uh, the finance faculty they can help in that way so according to the specialization wise this is a one criteria which i am giving uh, with my personal experience and according to your specialization in your respective institute you can plan what could be the possible matching criteria and that will help to both the party because if it is a mismatch then objective which we want to achieve through this mentorship program maybe we'll get a failure and that time we can't uh, like uh, blame to the party or the like a system so initially we need to plan the some strategy how we'll implement this mentorship program with respect to any institute maybe uh, art commerce science background or uh, engineering background medical background or management background so this is one prerequisite supporting the mentorship program in any institute so these are the stages of mentoring so uh, we are calling this mentorship program in it is a process it is a continuous process that's why it is uh, as shown in a cycle so we need to start with initiate cultivate evaluate and prepare so whenever it is a process 
we uh, it is a main four stage but apart from that also there are many stages which include in the life cycle mentoring relationship life, life cycle so when we start initiate we need to start we need to plan the that is a black, uh, rough plan or blue map we can say so how to implement this program cultivation will be exactly the implementation of your mentorship program evaluation is very very important that whether you have very small goals and according to the maybe you can prepare a calendar throughout like when students are taking admission from a day one till the last day of that student in your campus you can prepare a calendar for that mentorship program it is very very important so next is like support is to be ensured broadly in like a time allocation so here again when i'm saying it is a two-way approach so your particular system will help you regarding the time allocation as reduce allotment time for mentoring activities and time for professional learning activities so we all are familiar that when we start with any academic year we first thing which we are doing is a timetable okay so we need to keep a provision in that timetable for certain activity which is directly linked with mentorship program whereas maybe we need to keep up uh, uh, thrice in a week maybe uh, per day one hour half an hour so according to the requirement or according to your particular subjects you need to keep a provision so that it, it could be a practice in that premises or in that organization a well considered teaching load and the class allocation which take into account the beginning teachers experience and needs so it's very very important that you need to identify because that mentor again he is having a workload according to workload we need to give a mentors in her his or her observation the position of an induction and mentor coordinator as a leadership position in higher education institute regular and timetable mentoring meetings on a weekly or fortnightly basis so you need to keep a track on like that we plan in the your academic calendar or maybe with uh, with reference to your timetable you know that goes maybe uh, your class wise or specialization wise whether you are matching with that or not the mentor and noise teacher working in a close physical proximity to one another the mentor and beginning teacher teaching the same year or a subject level because maybe possibility like this uh, when we are starting with this mentor mentorship program we need to identify the requirement of the both the party active support from the higher education leadership for both the beginning teacher and the mentor now here when there are there uh, there is a possibility that you have certain in your organization like mentors so who will be a mentors in that maybe there are a few people who are a senior there are a few people who have experience of uh, like a, in a range of 0 to 5 5 to 10 10 to uh, 20 and four. you need to categorize like the mob of the student how we categorize the teacher as a mentor and student as a mentee so according to you need to first collect the data from a various specialization like you have a data of your all current teachers uh, you can treat them as a mentor and your enrolled student in that specific time year okay so according to that you can match this and start with the mentorship program a mentee so who will be mentee a mentee is someone who has identified a specified personal or professional goal and who believes that the guidance and the help of a mentor and being held accountable to the mentor mentor can help them achieve their goal or anyone who wants to learn and seek valuable advice from someone who knows in order to grow professionally and or personally now here i need to um, share one case like sometime uh, maybe like gender wise also suppose few girls they are not happy with their mentors and a few mentee like they are from a gender like a girls girls student so they are not happy with the mentor or they are not feeling comfortable with the male as a mentor so by choice they can ask keep family uh, female faculty or female mentor they can request them in an informal approach so that is a possibility because the ultimate goal of any organization to succeed with this mentorship program so we can opt for both the choices though it is a planned process we can offer them yes if you are not comfortable with the faculty if you are not comfortable with the mentor you have a choice to 
um, select your own mentor. So that you need to give, you need to provide that platform. So this is whenever you, uh, after this particular refresher course, whenever you visit or whenever you talk to your senior, uh, means entire faculty or maybe your director or a principal, convey this message, like give us a flexibility so that the teachers and even the student, they can select their mentor mentee. So as such, the mentee needs to actively participate, retain critically faculties, six new capacities, six overall development other than domain area, remain open to multiple influence and own responsibility for success. So again, there is a one process. We can start with the mentorship program. That is a normal we have. Uh, this is a one particular subject. I think most of the higher education institution, they are offering this subject to their students, organization behavior subject. So the re prerequisite of this subject, you can start with conducting their psychometric test where we can identify their level. And according, if you analyze the level of a student as the, your mentee, you can set certain benchmark. So it is a necessity or we can say the prerequisite so that you can plan your being a mentor. You can plan your mentorship program for that particular academic year or maybe uh, semester wise according to your system according to your college for empowering the teachers in the broad spectrum of areas and developing their holistic personality two phase mentoring strategy especially for teachers who are a new entrant in their higher education system had to be planned because we need to train even the old mentor as a teacher they need to train the new faculty as well as so this is again responsibility we share with the old teacher they can help they need to help the teacher who are supposed to be their future mentor a mentor so you all are a mentor and i consider for today's workshop you all are my mentor yes or no because at the end of my session you are giving me certain guidance so that i can improve with my uh, particular communication skill whatever it may be for for a day i take you all are my mentors so mentor is a teacher or an advisor who leads through guidance a mentor is an individual with expertise who can help develop the career of a mentee. The mentor guides, train, advise, and promote the career development of your mentee. Now, mentor is anyone who offers. So this is the last point. Who is a, who can be a mentor? It's very, very important for us. So mentor is anyone who offers knowledge, insight, perspective, or wisdom that helps other people professionally and also goes beyond duty or obligation. So uh, the many of the audience or the teachers who are a part of this refresher code today are maybe uh, the people who have already completed their PhD degree. So during their PhD journey, you have selected your mentor apart from your guide. Anyone has selected their mentor in their PhD uh, cycle or PhD. That is a very, very important one aspects of a teacher in higher education. Any reply? Can anyone help me to share your reply? Ma'am, please, uh, um, maybe uh, you need to unmute them so that they can share with their experience. No, ma'am, I have enabled them. I have enabled the microphone. Ma I can unmute and speak, ma'am. OK. So maybe though nobody want to share there, like uh, many people, uh, maybe possibility there are many uh, PhD holder are here, PhD degree holder. So this is one tenure which come in your cycle as a teacher. You This is a requirement of higher education or education system. Being You enter now to today is a demand because without a PhD, you can't enter into this education system. So this is now mandatory in higher education. So that was a time where uh, we are pursuing our uh, PhD degree. Oh, university they are giving you a guide apart from that because few people they are expertise in the statistical uh, or maybe uh, statistics few people they are smart enough in the research background few people because according to your topic you have selected suppose social science or maybe some experiment you need to identify like how many people in your around or in your university or in your campus in your education system so you can ask them i need your help uh, uh, you can off means you can just request them. Okay, I need your help. You can treat them as a mentor, and then it could be a possibility that they can mentor, they can help you throughout your journey of your PhD degree. So this could be a possibility that anyone who can offer knowledge, insight, and they can help at any level where you're stuck in your journey, any any journey. 
so they can act as a mentor in your life so uh, the two type mentioning uh, mentoring functions can be career and the psychological so considering that every person they have a career and like a psychological so this is a need of mentorship so uh, mentoring functions could be like a career functions help the mentee learn the ropes and the prepare for the career advancements so this is a normally like which is a very pre plan coaching challenging assignment exposure and visibility and the protection whereas the psychologically and nowadays many researcher uh, from indian origin and the foreign people when they are doing a lots of research on a human capacity human competency like one i did uh, through which i received one patent of indian government like employee performance so here they fail and this is a one particular because everyone smart enough when they are selected in any organization they have a high iq but considering the eq somewhere we fail in that so here it is very very important that a psychological functions where many people according to their uh, behavior you know though they have a uh, experience they do have a uh, knowledge they are not able to implement all those in the their particular tenure of a mentor or maybe as a teacher so it is very very important that for a mentor mentoring functions you need to identify a psychological need of your mentee role modeling acceptance and confirmation counseling and friendship so before you as a mentor you need to identify what is your psychological need because if you are competent enough whether you are ready to ment uh, mentor your mentee you need to identify your behavior so you need to do your swat before acting as a mentee and then uh, what psychometric testing there are lots of ready software are available you can use that or you maybe you can uh, plan your own strategy to test your mentee on the psychological behavioral level background so this will definitely help to make mentorship program successful so personality characteristics of a mentor now this is a generalized okay so maybe because uh, all individuals they carry their own behavior so according to that it is like maybe uh, some people they are uh, having all the knowledge people maybe they need they need to update their knowledge they are acting as a role model to their mentee they need a confident willingness to nurture volunteer to participate empathetic flexible and collaborative sometimes few people so rigid maybe they carry their personal stress at a workplace and same time if your mentee they are approaching you to for help it is it is not easy for you to help in that particular stress level so you need to work on your personality before starting with the mentorship program continuous learner being mentor also you need to learn through and in that particular tenure you are a student forever so continuous learner good interpersonal skill diplomat non competitive committed so i feel whenever being a mentor we are asking because there is a lots of competition and in that competitive advantage this is a particular scenario where people they feel considering a psychological need maybe there is a chances that people will get jealous then there will be a negative impact on their mindset so here why not to compete with your self so your biggest competitor is self so in my life also i follow that ki why not to compete with your competency and so you can fi finalize like in maybe into till 2022 you have this competency and this being a continuous learner can you adopt something which is needed in current scenario because nowadays your students your mentee are smarter than you in various aspects considering a uh, digitalization maybe considering that a uh, uh, new application so they are more smarter than you so if they are asking something related to this new challenging area a uh, changing scenario of uh, in indian level or economic level or international level or in international context so you you can't uh, say ki i'm not aware about that you can ask you can you need to help in that way also so for that you need to learn continuously so there are certain qualities of a mentor you need to first find out like will it possible for you to fit into that or maybe openness adaptiveness are the basic qualities of any mentor willingness to to serve as a source of information both in a mentee field and within the institution as an advisor who provide multiple perspective with the guidance on a better options so in that sense i'm very lucky that whole system because you people may be sitting uh, or maybe 
listening to me from various corner of India. And Pune University is one of the university where we consider in Marathi that it's a, um, a place of a wisdom with there's a Mahirgar. So we have a, that particular concrete system where everyone is helping a, each other. Okay, so in that sense, we we are to develop that particular culture that they are supposed to be with unless and until you are not supporting each other, we can't um, promise ourselves we can uh, support uh, to this particular mentorship program in your organization. So you need to build, you need to implement, you need to plan certain strategies so that before starting with this mentorship program, like what could be the possible requirement or the environment you need to create that culture you need to create that environment and only the higher authority are not responsible to give that environment you as a part of that system you can take a lead to create that culture to create that environment so that and that is a basic quality of a mentor as a teacher willingness to serve to be very specific, mentor provides constructive feedback by reviewing their mentee's draft proposal and paper so this is a very basic Okay, so like a day-to-day -day activity, mentor can also provide constructive feedback on instructional activities, both inside and outside of the classroom. So I always suggest my student, like in the classroom, we are a tutor and the learner, whereas in the veranda, we are their friends because we need to minimize the gap. In the classroom, we are teaching them because there are a mob. Whereas when people are meeting you in a veranda, they are meeting in your free time, they are coming with their personal queries. And you need to give them a platform where they feel free to come with any issue. And so you are answerable to them. So you need to provide su with such platform. And this is like there are certain interpersonal skill which you need to practice and people will approach to you. Student will approach to you and they can find they can select their mentor by choice. Perspective and sponsorship in the factual and beneficial services is also encouraged. So while it is not required, it is valuable and encouraged to involve their mentee as a co-author in a proposal or facilitate contact with others as appropriate. I have a few colleagues in my colleges. So they are writing certain research paper in a, in a, a business analytics and the, that is a requirement. And, um, the, uh, and she is an IQC co uh, head also in my institute. So this, this she has started with a small experiment. Uh, last, uh, she is implementing this practices from last five years what she did um uh, she's teaching brm subject as well as and what she's doing she's asking the students she's giving a separate uh sector whereas like a social a manufacturing a various sector and she's uh, asking them to select any problem in that particular sector identify certain issue and she's helping the student to write a research paper and we the entire system because we have I mean, my institute is one of the phd research center as well as so we are promising the student if your paper is up to that particular bar we will definitely help you to publish your paper in recognized Scopus listed journal, UGC care listed journal, quartile one, two, three, four journal. So that gives a motivation to student to work on that. And it is a team activity. So we are we are getting success in this activity from last five years. If you people are maybe getting some doubt, you can log into my website, college website. You can find that many people, many students, they have their research paper is selected in a Scopus UGC care, and this is an achievement of a mentor in an informal way. A mentor may also involve the mentee as a collaborator, leading to a co-authorship journal. So these are the possibilities, like you can help the student in various spectrum. Demonstrated success in a professional activities, essential for tenure and promotion of faculty, including having secured and sustained substantial external research funding published extensively in peer review or two journals. So the, there are various scopes where you can help your student. So recently we had, because maybe, uh, please, I'm sharing with you all, there are people from various um, organizations. There is a one particular platform, the government of India, they're coming with a different scholarship. Many students, though, anyhow, they manage to take an admission, but for their uh, like day-to-day -day activity, maybe, uh, their economic system or the family system is not supporting in that way so recently i uh, this is through my social connect social networking i come to know that there was a one student and recently uh, under the like uh, this uh, startup initiative taken by our honorable prime minister narendra modi he is honored for that angster engaged startup uh, initiator okay so uh, that uh, companies are forced to and 
they are getting a success so this is one platform where you can help your student apart from because people maybe they are belong to weaker section and they need some money apart from government scholarship area also you can help student to apply for this particular non government platform where many company under their csr fund they are releasing a fund to help the student for their education to complete certain project to complete certain research paper to visit various places for uh, study tour so these are a various platform you can help the students so for that being a mentor you need to um, uh, build your social networking with the today to we are blessed with the such a social networking with various tools and resources so you need to use those tools and resources to build your social network so these are a certain way there is a uh, maybe through the informal mentoring mentorship program also you can help student to provide this guidance so desirable these are a desirable qualities of a mentor so concern that the student the today's audience who are uh, listening to me they have already made their mind and maybe few people they are already using all those uh, qualities uh, as a mentor assertive knowledge confident competent approachable honest empathetic a good listener experienced trustworthy patience accessible creative kind consistent fair non judgmental and respected by their peers so this is your own personality which help you to fit into that desirable qualities of a mentor many time like mentor and there are one too many this is one combination of mentorship program and maybe throughout the this mentorship program you are you are communicating to all your mentor and suppose you are based your quality one of the quality like your favoritism or maybe uh, comparison you know comparative uh, comparison one mentee with the other mentee so that is not allowed uh, in the mentorship program because then it gives a demotivation or negative motivation to the that mentee so because individual consider that every individual they have their own personality so consider that because even being a parent also you people are use uh, all the faculty they are aware about that at your place at your home okay? so your kids they have their individual personality so according to their personality you need to identify the area and on that you need to focus there is a need to mentor the my mentee now these are a small expectation from a mentor awareness of the mentee's teacher context of a learning understanding of a teaching practicum requirement and the teacher learning aspects contextual knowledge of a mentee's teachers online learning modules that was like during the covid we use all those modules pedagogy of adult learning and a mentoring and knowledge of the teaching profession understanding of the higher education system and the teachers effectiveness performance criteria because we know that we have kg to pg this is a pattern of a indian education system so you people are familiar with like uh, maybe you have your kids and ask them like what type of a learning teaching methods you can visit to the kg uh, kg standards till 1 to 12 also they have a different pattern to teach okay but here being a higher education system we have we need to develop exper experiential or a practical approach in your teaching learning process so being a mentor also you need to find out like what exactly the system we can use to train or to help your mentee collection and inter interpretation of evidence of a learning that is very very important now these are the certain interpretation you can take from your own personal uh, experience or you can collect all those inter uh, evidence from your learning of others so that definitely help you to mentor analysis and reflection on evidence of a learning use of effective observation skills and a strategy so here maybe you have a from various specialization and the area a branch or a um, sector here this particular teaching or mentoring um, uh, strategy will definitely help there are a certain learning which is based on observation and for that you need to because there is a not a single university in india currently who are actually having a program design program to how to think how to observe because there is a no concrete idea so here you need to plan you need to give certain input to your mentee that this is one method which is very very 
helpful because day to day learning day to day observation at various platform here yeah, there are many things which we can adapt we can implement at your own personal development demonstration of a professional leadership and understanding of the potentiality of effective teaching counseling and guidance skills suiting the needs and requirements of the mentee role model in various dimension of academic so definitely when you are acting as a mentor few people informal way they are they are observing your personality as well and there are many things which they are taking from your uh, your personality maybe your communication style your dressing style your the way of respecting others the way of greeting the way of uh, like uh, communicating with the senior junior so th there are various aspects of your personalities that your mentee they are observing without giving any intimation to you as a mentor so these are a certain expectation qualification and experience of a mentor in higher education he or she must have contributed to at least one of this area so these are a possibility apart from that like we can have various type of a combination research and development and here consider that this is not only the uh, sort of a concrete what is the requirement of higher education in your day to day life personal life also you can have that attitude towards research and development uh, there are a different uh, implementation phase where on the basis of research you can use teaching methods okay so this is again you can include what could be maybe syllabus is same for that particular 2 3 years but you can do experimentation like once being a mentor i have that particular syllabus now how to teach that syllabus with some multi method approach so that is up to you so that is again research and development you are collecting a data like how this subject is teach by others to faculty in other other university or other sector and then how you can develop yourself as well as through your teaching through your training how can they develop your own student or own mentee curricular development so maybe there is certain contribution of a mentee in a curricular development so definitely you can add your expertise in that way that suggesting the university or syllabus the committee who are framing the curriculum or syllabus ki there are a certain aspects which you need to add in a new syllabus so that is again exp, uh, qualification required instructional material development you can create your own material okay counseling is very very important now here counseling means is not only related to technical or conceptual way it is sometime in the current scenario mentorship program to make this mentorship program because you know people are aware that when we are starting this mentorship program in first year uh, what type of a mentors that mentee coming to you you they are away from their family because higher education possibility are first time they are away from their own parents first time they are away from their basic native city they are going uh, uh, and uh, to take their higher education in maybe Uh, in a different uh, area or maybe in a different environment so maybe there is a possibility they are feeling lonely sometime they are they are working in isolation they are learning in isolation uh, sometime they are not able to discuss they are not able to uh, share their what they exactly they are feeling so during this mentorship program the your first phase that you need to identify the personality or the requirement of your mentee at your personal level not at a technical level and then only you will able to success in the mentorship program so member of a national and international policy level committee where even the people sitting at a higher position they can help being a mentor ki what could be the possible policy we can implement you people are aware about that we uh, we are in a phase of to implement the nep 2020 so that is where many teacher many mentor they help the government to contribute by their expertise by their experience what could be the possible changes we can you we can add we can implement to change our education system so that is a good documentation i think you must go in detail nep 2022 to, uh, sorry 20 documentation yeah, which is easily available on government website as well as engage in motivational talk so this is a vice versa one way like you can listen you can watch different motivational talk or maybe you 
flourish that particular personality that you will be invited at various platform not only the education platform but being a teacher you are paying to your society where a society they can ask you to come at this particular area and importance of teaching important whatever there are a different aspect different problems in the society where being a teacher being a mentor you can help a society in that area also so engage in a motivational talk direct subject teaching and that is a core that is the one which we have started that's why i am discussing this issue end of the that particular panel because everyone they are expert in their subject area so apart from that 1 2 6 is very very uh, this is a essential qualification so mentor should be physically and mentally fit to the satisfaction of mentee so apart from all the qualification and experience i think all the um, these participants they definitely agree to this my last point whereas i consider this particular aspect is very 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 important for everyone okay apart from your all the these are the requirement but i personally feel mentors should be physically and mentally fit to their satisfaction of a mentee because these two things the person suppose i'm just saying you are ill or you you will not able to concentrate or you will not able to share you will not help your mentee suppose you are a, we have a different emotions you have a stress level and then the mentee he is seeking your help in that condition also you will not able to help your mentee he is coming with certain expectation from you and if you are not able to help that mentee it means that the person which go with the dissatisfaction and the, again when he will try to come or try to contact you he will think twice whether my mentor is in a good condition mental condition or not uh, maybe he is angry or happy or what emotion he is having that particular time so try to find out you need to work you need to practice you need to identify your physical and mentally fitness is relevantly very very important to satisfy the your mentees so being a mentor what exactly the role of a mentor offer advice that helps the mentee develop the role is not to make a decisions for the mentee because you are giving you are a mediator whereas you are helping your mentor to come with some alternative solution and let them let her or him take their own decision because you are supporting him that yeah. this could be a possibility try to analyze which like any decision maybe related to uh, personal life maybe related to any professional life help him find out uh, possibility this is a possibility this is a alternative suppose the person is coming your mentee is coming with the ac action plan plan a can you help him or her to create his plan b suppose uh, if he or she is implementing a plan a action plan a or somewhere in the implementation phase they are noticing ki ye plan could not be success in a future so in that we can redirect we can connect or we can implement plan b so for that we can help your mentee to how to create alternatives how to create a plan b so definitely that gives a motivation to both the party okay train to be efficient guidance and advice for one mentee may also be appropriate for another so it's really help you need to train yourself as well as train to be efficient be aware of potential pitfalls over dependence of a mentee mentee exploitation of a mentor's influence now here uh, not create that atmosphere where the, your mentee is totally depend on you you know normally uh, in that parent uh, parenthood you will notice that ki spoon feeding you know so somewhere at a certain stage of your life like 0 to 3 uh, or 0 to 4 you are uh, feeding your kids by spoon or by your own hand but you need to make you need to train them to have your own food have so here in a mentorship program also every time uh, you need to support him help him but not a over dependence of mentee maybe so future in future that will be a dangerous for them they will not think by their own uh, thought process by their views and they will not take uh, what we can say, sort of a um, what we, uh, maybe they will not help themselves in that sense be sensitive to the difference between developing a mentee and using a mentee 
many times it is observed and reported by mentee that mentor are using the competency of a mentee for their own development okay like suppose i'm giving an example they have certain work okay they have their own responsibility and they are asking their mentee to work for them so it is really something not ethic non ethical where you need to practice the when we are asking to practice some ethics in the mentorship program so we can ask the mentee to perform personal work or any uh, 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 related to some you have certain professional work or any college work so don't take their help that gives very bad impression be aware of the dynamics of the relationship developmental need may change so here at the phase of like a first semester people or mentee totally blank and you need to give them a time bound program for that initially i said ki once student they are taking admission to your institute can we plan the calendar mentorship program calendar yes so these are additional roles and the characteristics of mentors they are a role model energy giving invision in investor supporter investor not in a term of some time you can monitor you can help them in a monetary term but you are investing a knowledge you are investing your experience for their development standard broader taker coach teacher coach feedback giver eye opener door opener now in what sense door opener maybe uh, without with your experience you are helping them to identify the uh, different platform where they can uh, that it can be helpful for their career development so uh, again this is my uh, personal experience which i'm sharing with you there are lots of government uh, opportunity especially in a management institute that was a normal a mindset that ki uh, management uh, student they don't have a government job so uh, i uh, i after my engineering i i was uh, doing my banking examination so uh, i was preparing for uh, is and um, is uh, uh, coaching and during that i identified there are a lots of platform where it's like engineer and for engineering also there are a government jobs so uh, this is one particular your quality to explore your with the help of a different tools different the job portal different website so that this particular your habit help your student so this is one particular your habit through that i ask my hr student i am from hr background i ask my hr student ki there are lots of opportunity in hr for in hr specialization so uh, during my this particular work trainer more than 10 student are working in a government sector as a labor labor welfare officer then uh, 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 hr developer trainer they are dealing with the government agency we have hrd ministry one of my uh, uh, student uh, his uh, many he is a very senior student because this is a particular mba degree where the student after taking a, after doing job also they can seek admission so he is working in a government sector uh, as a trainer so these are a certain uh, certain possibility like uh, there is a uh, safety uh, welfare facility there lots of platform in government sector also so these are a certain knowledge if you have that particular habit to explore yourself then only you can help your mentee idea bouncer problem solver career counselor challenger so here we normally have as a personal few people come in the category of high risk taker few people they are taking very calculated risk few people they don't want to take any risk so that is your individual choice which type of a risk for a future career you want to take and according to that only you can help your mentee also you need to show the uh, reality to your mentor ki this is a reality maybe there is a scope for you in a future because these people are for them the current market or a current uh, the scenario they are totally away from that so you people are instrumental to help them regarding to find out their career what exactly uh, maybe in a next five year what exactly for me which suit me according to my caliber so you will be the instrumental for that so mentor men, uh, mentor and mentor Mentor, mentee meeting. So for a mentee, setting realistic goals. These are a requirement. Being a mentor and a mentee, you have you can plan a consecutive meetings like once in a month, 
once in a, um, a, a week according to that you can contact your mentee some uh, i will definitely share like what could be the possible tools and technique we can use to make this mentorship program successful setting realistic goal time commitment that's really important and that particular habit help both not only a mentee but it help as mentor as well as clarifying goal, roles and the responsibility so you need to clarify with exactly what is your role as a mentee and being a mentor you need to help them to identify their responsibility feedback and communication be efficient respect boundaries for mentor establish effective working relationship create an environment for a learning context for practice and a leadership so definitely it helps if you are having all those uh, characteristics of this mentee and mentor these are a requisite for making the mentorship program successful so these are a implementation strategy this is a module which we have started in my institute for empowering the teachers in a broad spectrum of areas and developing their holistic personality two phase mentoring strategy especially for the teacher who are a new entrant in the higher education system have been planned so uh, these are a uh, helpful if you are going with the plan maybe meanwhile in the implementation phase you will come to know that maybe uh, there are a different module and uh, in that different pattern is given so times will be maybe you will get a failure or sometime you will getting success beyond your expectation possibility in a probability base so module one that is getting started so we can start with the ice breaking sessions uh, do your induction and the orientation program so this is a module one in that what exactly we can cover organizational items workshop objective so this is one model where you can focus on that second model which be defining a coaching and a mentoring so you need to clarify with what exactly come under the coaching and what exactly a mentoring so there will because the term similar the uh, when we are calling it as a process similar process but something there is a hairline difference between a mentoring and coaching you need to identify and both the party must be specifically relevant about what exactly come under the mentoring what come under the coaching so model 3 will help in that setting a goal now goal for both the party mentor as well as and mentee as well as identify a appropriate goal area you need to identify appropriate goal area module 4 will work on that understanding the reality it is very very important that unless and until we are not aware about key exactly what uh, uh, in current scenario because uh, you people are exper um, experienced that last 3 year totally because this is an uncertainty in life you need to ready with that to come and to take any challenges you know and with the external changes you have to prepare with that like how to tackle with the external changes so this is understanding the reality getting a picture of where you are identifying obstacle exploring the past because this is a two way approach like you are considering your current scenario you can find out ki possibility it, it could be a possible obstacle in your career or in your mentorship program whereas the exploring the past you can learn many thing model 5 will developing up options identifying the paths this is like when i was talking about like you must be ready with the alternative so are we have that particular knowledge or a data or information so that we can come with the plan a plan b multiple plan multiple uh, or alternative so that you can help at any level you know and you can redirect your action choosing your final approach structuring a plan so though you have a mini plan ready with you that is a rough work you need to select any one at the one moment and then if it is not success you can redirect it but for that at least you need to develop the options module 6 will work on wrapping it all, all up creating the final plan identifying the first step and getting motivated so this will be in a model 6 model 7 will be help importance of trust too what is trust trust and coaching building trust so like here in informal and the formal both mentoring pattern this particular model 7 will help because the both the party when we are starting with this mentorship program they are not aware about the competency or their personal behavior or their uh, mentor and mentee so here this particular module will help in that way to understand each other that is a mutual understanding module 8 will work on providing feedback 
So it is a feedback sandwich. Mentor is giving feedback to a mentor, and mentee is mentor is giving uh, sorry vice versa, providing a constructive criticism. Again, it's very very important. This is a constructive criticism. Sometimes many mentee or mentor also they are taking in a negative sense. But I feel personally, even we new we we need to give uh, this platform to your own student. Being a teacher also, keep this platform open. If the people they are coming with certain suggestion, maybe you are teaching you have your own style of teaching, and student they are not happy with your teaching style. So uh, ask them like according to you, or maybe there is there any need to update my knowledge, update or edit in my teaching. style so definitely that help your personality development encouraging growth and development so module 9 will focus on the overcoming a road blocks that is like you are ready with if this particular problem will exist in a future i have a solution prior to it, that problem exist in my path or in my mentorship program so common obstacle you need to list out certain common obstacle reevaluating the goals focusing on progress so that is you will easily overcome a road blocks module 10 will work on reaching the end so how to know when you have achieved the success you need to identify that ki when you are setting your benchmark and that is everyone even when uh, you are as in a career cycle also or in your tenure you have your benchmark like when you are creating ladder for your success you achieve one you know we normally have that is when we are started with the basic as a teacher as a lecturer or as a professor or as a any 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 steps in that particular ladder we are aware about ki after few years i need to reach next to next to next so in this mentorship program also you are identifying ki what next Trans transition the coach wrapping it all then models 11 will focus on how mentoring differs from coaching okay so here we'll get a basic idea like what exactly the difference between the mentoring and coaching blending the two models adapting to grow model for mentoring this will help like mentoring is based on coaching okay so that's why we are blending the both model focusing on the relationship and it is very very important apart from that when you people enter into this mentorship program as a mentor somewhere you are involving in their personal life as well as so you need to there is one particular uh, philosophy of Uh, normal psychology which deal with like a attachment and detachment so that again help if there are a women uh, faculty who are listening to me they are aware about that like till your before your marriage you are strongly attached with your parents okay and uh, uh, immediately after your marriage somewhere you have implemented that particular practice we are aware about that there is a really hard for any girl when she become or maybe she married to the uh, person and uh, going to uh, start with a new inning of her life so somewhere this particular philosophy of attachment and detachment help for your focusing on a new relationship so here same thing will you need to implement in your mentorship relationship as well as where to like there are you need to control all your emotions so you need to uh, build your emotional intelligence in to make success in the mentorship program module 12 that is the last module wrapping it or wrapping up so what's from the wise lesson learned completion of action plans and the evolution so it is very very important because when we are started with it is a mentorship program or a process when we started there is a some destination once you you know we start our journey so here when we are started with our journey we are aware about ki this is my objective and to achieve that objective we have multi method approach once you reach to that destination there are a certain um, um, sign board we need to create for ki how whether you have reached to your destination or not okay so for that feedback system help you to take a note that yes you are reaching to your destination okay so this is a complete which is very small model which we have Uh, generated under the education system according to national education policy 20 so this is a quick summary a learning does not only take a place inside the classroom i know that all the faculty will definitely uh, uh, like uh, what i given in the quick summary they will uh, follow or maybe they will definitely find out like yes really learning does not only take place inside the classroom i to personally feel 
actual learning is outside the classroom and in uh, maybe that is a collaborative approach that we follow in the higher education system developing relationship with the student contribute their personal growth their career growth their professional growth mentors also grow and learn while mentoring by solving issue definitely because uh, I, I given a stress on like it is a two-way approach when you want to help your for mentee and you people are not aware about that definitely you explore you try to find out exactly what that particular maybe my mentor mentee see what he has asked something and i'm not aware about that. you people become curious to get the detail about that particular concept so in that sense you are developing yourself mentor influence mentee so that is your personality which helps to influence a mentors that is your own characteristics personality your knowledge your subjectize will help mentee to develop when the mentor role is taken seriously it brings pride to the profession so definitely somewhere apart from your role as a teacher hardcore teacher this mentor definitely give a self satisfaction teacher as a mentor must invest in a student so it is not a monetary investment it is more than that so i feel all the faculty will believe on my this last statement ki teacher as a mentors must invest in students development so when we finish with this mentorship program many relationship come to a natural end when a mentee learns enough to the independent from specific mentors so new mentoring relationship with others may be more beneficial than the continuing and exhausted relationship because this is at in higher education few uh, that courses which may be uh, like for one or uh, two years or more than two years so you need to like detach you need to use that uh, philosophy of a behavior science or a psychological science that is like a attachment and detachment program end may not mean the end of a relationship informal mentoring can continue if both the parties agree so this could be your own wish if you want to continue with your relationship apart from if you come like that person like in my institute we have a two years mentorship program but still we have a networking or repo with all my mentors who are connecting me they are communicating with us they are asking they are calling they are wishing about me like so this is like an informal mentoring still these people they are asking advice like uh, some people they want to uh, like uh, uh, continue with their ms study in a foreign uh, institution or maybe they want to pursue higher education apart from the your masters so for many when they stuck with some issues or some problem that definitely they are calling us like what should be the next so you must be ready with that also so somewhere you need to create your sort of your mind to help your mentee in future as well as once you done with your mentorship program pilot program will assess how mentoring made the needs of both mentees and mentors so these are the outcome of this particular mentorship program and i uh, definitely um communicate uh, through this my uh, this particular the time which is given or allotted to me so i feel i maybe uh, this is based on your feedback i met your expectation and now i'm free for your queries and questions so madam please thanks a lot for providing me this platform once again i'm uh, very grateful for offering me this uh, platform to share my knowledge on mentorship program thank you ma'am the session is open for discussion now you can unmute and interact with the resource person or you can post your questions in the chat box also ma'am is there to help you thank yes. you ma'am thank you all any question from Dear participants, do you have any queries? You can post it in chat box also. I'll read it to ma'am. So there are two possibility. 
maybe you understood everything or maybe you have not uh, taken anything from this discussion so share your fair feedback so that which help me to maybe update my knowledge regarding this mentorship program so kindly help me dear participants do you have any queries Okay, I'm just asking small question. If you are starting with this mentorship program, what could be a possible uh, styles or uh, tools you can use initial days? Like you are not aware about their uh, behavior or any, any. What are the, like apart from your formal techniques, can you suggest me some basic tools which you can use with this mentorship program? Very basic. How to familiar with your mentee? Can anyone? Because then both the party they are giving their platform to open up. So maybe I'm just sharing with few strategy or the tools where you can uh, offer this particular to your mentee as well as a regular meeting, not in a very formal way. Can you arrange certain meeting in an informal way? Maybe you can meet in on a coffee table or in a park, in a public place, so that you people can you as a teacher and as a mentor. You can give the platform to your mentee so that he or she can open up. She can come and communicate freely. Oh, then you can have a very various brainstorming session. Okay, When you are acting as a one to many, in that way also, there are lots of strategy and tools we can use to uh, in mentorship program. Okay, so uh, from my side, I done with from my side, I think there is no question. So I consider that maybe you all have taken in in very positive spirit. Any queries, participants? Apart from Thank this you, session uh, also, you have, uh, you, if you want to ask any question related to this particular topic i'm free to share or free to communicate anytime you can just drop a mail message to me and i'm very happy to help you in that sense i think there are no queries ma'am shall we wind up ma'am yes ma'am thanks a lot on behalf of iot academy we thank dr karuna jadav for the informative enlightening and interesting session and we thank you once again for the amazing and excellent presentation ma'am and we thank you for enhancing our knowledge with the commentable presentation. It was an awesome session, ma'am. We thank you very much for your efforts, ma'am. I thank all the participants for joining the session today. Kindly submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. We thank you very much for your efforts, ma'am. Please submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box. Thank you all.